is my Asus Crosshair 5 Formula Z motherboard. Okay, I actually have two. One for hardcore overclocking, and one as a backup for when I do something incredibly stupid and break this one. This is one of those incredibly stupid moments. Now there's a lot of things I like about this motherboard. It has lots of PCI Express slots, lots of fan headers, onboard power and reset buttons, and a big chungus VRM that could probably cool the core at Chernobyl. So when it comes to AM3 motherboards, this is kind of the top of the line. There is one thing I don't like about it though. It doesn't have active chipset cooling. Now if you don't know what active chipset cooling is, it's basically a chipset cooler with a fan on it. Back in the day, a lot of high-end motherboards had active chipset cooling. Nowadays, it's pretty rare, and that's basically because it's more or less useless. Still, for some reason, I got it in my head that it would be a good idea to put an active chipset cooler on my overclocking motherboard. Now, the easiest way to do it would be to just zip tie a fan to the current chipset cooler. However, I can never do things the easy way, and that would actually cause interference if I ever wanted to put a graphics card in the second PCI Express X16 slot. So what I did was I went through my box of spare graphics cards and video adapters and found one that had a low profile active cooler. Sorry 8400 GT, this just isn't your day. We're going to be ripping the cooler off of this graphics card and putting it on this motherboard. Now, there are a couple reasons I picked this cooler. First, it's very low profile so it should still fit under a graphics card in the PCI Express slots. And two, the mounting holes seem to line up very well with the holes that are already in the motherboard for the current chipset cooler. First, I pulled the cooler off of the GPU and cleaned off all of the old thermal paste. Then I proceeded to pull the cooler off of the motherboard and cleaned off what was left of the thermal pad. Next step was test mounting the cooler on the motherboard and it doesn't fit. There are several components on the motherboard that are interfering with the cooler. I was really close to giving up right here. Still, for the sake of this video and the experiment, I decided to press through and I cut out some holes from the cooler so that it would fit on the motherboard. I gotta tell you guys, it wasn't pretty. I don't have a Dremel, so that's now on the shopping list because that would have made this job a whole lot easier. Here's where we reach our second problem. The pins on the cooler are very close to lining up with the holes on the motherboard for the cooler, but they're not quite perfect. One of the pins had to go in kind of at an angle. Now let's slap on the fan, and we ran into another problem. The PCI Express slot was interfering with the fan shroud. Of course, because nothing can be easy. I proceeded to cut a hole in the fan shroud, and that seems to have worked. Now we just have to plug the fan into one of the fan headers on the motherboard. Never mind that we're slightly bending the pins on that header. Still, everything is hooked up and should be ready to go. Now we just need to set up the test system again and see if it'll boot. Now let me be clear, I am not certain at this point that we have cleared all of the components on the motherboard with the cooler, just those that were really obvious. Regardless, I pressed forward. I hit the power button, and lo and behold, we booted into Windows! Yay! Now here's the big question. Did we actually see an improvement with an active chipset cooler that was jankily modified to fit this motherboard? And the answer is yes. With the passive cooler, we were getting 34 degrees Celsius and climbing, and with the active cooler, we are holding steady at 30 degrees Celsius, and this is with the same ambient room temperature. I checked multiple times to verify that. Now there is one slight issue. Without the hardware to properly hold up the GPU, it sags a little bit and actually sets on the fan on the chipset cooler, causing it to wind quite a bit. 
if this were in a case environment, it wouldn't be an issue, but because we're sitting on a cardboard box, that turned out to be a little bit of a problem. I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm actually really excited that there's an EVGA sticker on this Asus motherboard. I find that kind of hilarious. So here's the question. Do I recommend you do this? The answer is pretty much no. In a case environment, you still are gonna get airflow over your passive chipset cooler, and in 99.9% .9 of situations, that will be absolutely more than enough. The reason I did this is because I wanted to have a little bit of fun, and because when overclocking on a test bench, you really don't have any airflow over those components, and you are pushing them to their absolute limits. So the only situation in which this might be a good idea, and I stress might, is if you're doing hardcore overclocking on a test bench. As always, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe, follow us on our social media platforms, and check out our Discord and our website so you can pick yourself up some tech tested merch.